Phishing is a cybercrime technique that uses fraud, trickery, or deception to manipulate you into disclosing sensitive personal information. In today's video, we will learn how it works so that you can detect and block phishing scams and keep your data safe from attackers. Phishing is one of the internet's oldest and most well-known scams. We can define phishing as any type of telecommunications fraud that uses social engineering tricks to obtain private data from victims. There are three components to a phishing attack. Number one, the attack is conducted via electronic communication, such as email or a phone call. Number two, the attacker pretends to be an individual or organization you can trust. And finally, the goal is to obtain sensitive information, personal information, such as login credentials or credit card numbers. This deception is where phishing gets its name. The cyber criminal goes phishing with an attractive bait in order to hook victims from the vast ocean of internet users. The pH in phishing comes from the mid 1900s hobby of phone freaking, in which enthusiast freaks would experiment with telecommunication networks to figure out how they worked. Freaking and phishing equals phishing. Spam or fish. In this case, order the spam. The one key difference between spam and phishing is that spammers aren't out to hurt you. Spam is junk mail, just a bunch of unwanted ads. Phishing attackers want to steal your data and use it against you. Later in this video, we examine exactly how they do it and what they're looking to achieve. Regardless of whether or not real life spam is one of your favorite foods, remember the following fun rhyme. Spam is delicious, but fish is malicious. Whether conducted over email, social media, SMS, or another attack vector, all phishing attacks follow the same basic principles. The attacker sends a targeted pitch aimed at persuading the victim to click a link, download an attachment, send their requested information, or even complete an actual payment. As for what phishing can do, that's left up to the imagination and skill of the fisher. The ubiquity of social media means that fishers have access to more personal info on their targeted servers than ever before. Armed with all this data, fishers can precisely tailor their attacks to the needs, wants, and life circumstances of their targets, resulting in a much more attractive proposition. Social media in these cases fuels more powerful social engineering. Most phishing can lead to identity or financial theft, and it's also an effective technique for corporate espionage or data theft. Some hackers will go so far as to create fake social media profiles and invest time into building a report with the potential victims, only springing the trap after establishing trust. What's the cost of phishing? Not just financial damages, but in these cases, a loss of trust. It hurts to get scammed by someone you thought you could count on, and recovery can take a long time. Let's dig a bit deeper and get our hands dirty. What is phishing all about? Where might be a phishing attack come from and what could it look like? Time to get some answers. Email phishing. Far and away from the most common method, email phishing uses email to deliver the phishing bait. These emails will often contain links to malicious websites or attachments containing malware. We'll show you later what a phishing email might look like so you'll know which emails to avoid. Website phishing. Phishing websites, also known as spoofed sites, are fake copies of real websites that you know and trust. Hackers make these spoofed sites in order to fool you into entering your login credentials, which they then can use to log into your actual accounts. Pop-ups are also a common source of website phishing. Vishing, short for voice phishing. Vishing is the audio version of internet phishing. The attacker will attempt to convince victims over the phone to disclose personal information that can later be used for identity theft. Many robocalls are vishing attempts. Smishing. Smishing is phishing via SMS. You'll receive a text message asking you to click a link or download an app. But when you do, you'll be tricked into downloading malware onto your phone, which can hijack your personal information and send it to the attacker. Social media phishing. Some attackers can hack social media accounts and force people to send malicious links to their friends. Others create fake profiles and fish others from these personas. Through the primary phishing attack vectors listed before, hackers can conduct a wide range of attacks ranging from technical wizardry to good old-fashioned con jobs. Don't let any of these happen to you. Deceptive phishing. 
Wait a second, haven't we been saying the whole time that fishing is deceptive? Well, yes. Fishing is all about fooling you, but deceptive fishing as a term specifically refers to when attackers masquerade as legitimate companies or individuals in order to gain your trust. Smear fishing. Large-scale fishing campaigns are like industrial fishing boats trawling the ocean with massive nets, trying to ensnare anyone and everyone. In contrast, spear fishing is when fishers personalize their attacks to target specific individuals. Professional social networks like LinkedIn have popularized spear phishing for corporate cybercrime, as hackers can easily find all of your employment in one place. Whaling. Completing the set of nautical metaphors in wa is whaling, which is a phishing attack that targets a certain high-value individual. It's the same as spear phishing, but with much more amb ambitious targets. Even C-suite executives aren't immune to whaling attacks. CEO fraud. Fishers will impersonate a company's CEO or other high-ranking executive to extract either payment or insider info from employees. CEO fraud campaigns are frequent follow-ups to whaling attacks since the attacker has already obtained the CEO's login credentials. Farming. Farming attacks. Fishing and farming use technological tricks to replace the need to fool you with bait. For example, DNS cache poisoning is a farming technique that can automatically redirect you away from a legitimate website and instead to the attacker's spoofed version. If you're not paying attention, you won't notice the scam until it's too late. Dropbox phishing and Google Docs phishing. Popular cloud services are attractive phishing targets. Attackers will whip up spoofed version of the login screens, harvest your credentials and when you enter them, and then help themselves to all your files and data. Clone phishing. Attackers can take a legitimate email and then clone it, sending the exact same email to all the previous recipients with one crucial twist. The links are malicious now. Link manipulation. Fishers will send links that appear as though they're leading to one URL, but when clicked, go somewhere else. Common tricks include deliberate misspellings, example only versus only. The second one has a capital I or writing the name of a trusted website as the links display link as the links display text these are also known as homograph attacks cross site scripting sophisticated fishers can exploit weaknesses in a website script to hijack the site for their own ends cross site scripting is hard to detect because everything on the website appears to be legitimate from the url to security certificates we have reached the end of part one guys make sure to stay tuned for our next part and let us know if you have any questions in the comment section below take care and we'll see you in the next one